I had, I had. In 1974, a new Saturday morning show brought the rough world of the children's playground into the TV studio for the first time. With its anarchic combination of comedy, pop music and gunge, Tizwas set the template for Saturday morning TV until today. Its title was an acronym of a remarkably sedate invitation. Today is Saturday, watch and smile. And that was sent in um, by a viewer. It was. The Tizwas presenters have moved on from their anarchic origins. Chris Tarrant's original co-presenter Peter Tomlinson is now a pillar of the community as High Sheriff of the West Midlands. Thirty years ago, I used to dress up with funny clothing on, the, on Tiswas, um, ostensibly to entertain and uh, make people laugh and have custard pies thrown in my face and buckets of water thrown um, over me. And now I'm dressed in something that other people might consider to be um, slightly funny, and I'm going in to sit in Court 12 in the most serious, um, in the most serious of in of environments um, as the High Sheriff. Strange, really. <laughs> Tis was, was rebellious even in its early days, when it was little more than a series of in-vision continuity announcements between Saturday morning programmes. The team threw out the rule book of professional presenting. Get the floor manager, counting you down, <laughs> counting you down, five, four, three, two, one, and you'd do that exactly right because you prided yourself on uh, being a professional <laughs> presenter and nothing would happen. You'd be left there and you'd realise that you were still in vision and, you'd, <laughs> and you'd realise that Daffy Duck hadn't started and you realised that he was playing a trick and you thought, OK, who's going to give in first of all? So you do this. Well, I thought we were going to have Daffy Duck. <laughs> yes, you thought we were going to have Daffy Duck as well. In fact, I think Chris on camera one, did you think we were going to have Daffy <laughs> Duck? And the camera would nod. <laughs> yes, we thought so too. Did camera two? No. Oh, there's obviously a problem then. We can't have Daffy Duck because camera two didn't think, oh, oh darling, you'd hear a voice then. Yeah, yeah. What did you used to say? I'm I'm, oh, darling, I'm bored. Wrong thing to say. <laughs> the buckets of water and the phantom flan flinger and his custard pies, which became such a defining feature of the show, began as a way of compensating for the team's limited comedy writing skills. An Irish fellow went to a pet shop. He bought a zebra. He called it Spot. <laughs> <laughs> It was just a way to get out of a joke that didn't work. <laughs> if we're sitting there, all of us, on a Friday night with the yeah. programme about to go on the following morning and everybody says, well, what, what's the payoff? Or what do we do? What's the end of it? Which is where the water and the custard pies all came from. The increasing chaos in the studio attracted the attention of the top brass at ATV. I was called upstairs uh, to Paris at B. And uh, <laughs> so... The next week I sent the props out and they bought two large cans of beer. <laughs> threw beer. And I was caught up stairs again and said, we told you not to throw water. I said, I didn't throw any water. We saw the programme, that was water. I said, it wasn't, it was beer. <laughs> in a daring daylight robbery in London today, thieves got away with one of the biggest halls ever known. It was the Albert Hall. <laughs> Tis was involved its young viewers in ways that added to the show's growing notoriety. He wanted to come back. He said he wanted to come back. I said, I'm not having that again. We're not making that child do that walk. I'm sorry. We've got to find some way of the child being there. And I don't know who said it. I don't remember who said it. We'll pull him up by the ears. Probably Chris or yeah. you. And it suddenly this big thing of came with, and they loved it. The kids thought this was wonderful. We pulled up by your ears, you know, and it saved so much time, saved all the nerves. But they were there and they were on. Your name is? Pulling kids up by their ears from behind the desk. I really didn't like that. I really don't like the idea of treating kids in, without respect. So I, I didn't like that much. Get off! I was not a great fan of this, was I must admit, because I thought uh, as long a programme as that ought to have some worthwhile content in it, and it didn't. When Tiz was, was syndicated to all of the ITV regions, it became a national phenomenon at a time when the BBC Saturday morning programmes were in decline. To go and see the controller on a routine meeting as, a, as an acting head, and it was Brown Cargill, uh, and he said... Uh, you're doing all right in the in the week, but you're not you're not doing that well on Saturday mornings, are you? So I said, no, we aren't doing well on Saturday mornings. The reason is there isn't any money on Saturday mornings at all. And he said, you come up with the idea, and I'll find the money. So I thought, oh well, right. <laughs> the show they developed was Multicolored Swap Shop, a fast-paced compendium of pop music, phone-ins, and news reports 
plus a special extra ingredient, events where children could swap old or unwanted toys. The format was set, all the BBC needed was a star presenter. We auditioned various people uh, and a young disc jockey came for the audition from Radio Warm called Noel Edmonds. He said, well, what is this programme about the first time we met? And I said, well, I don't know, I haven't decided yet. But she said, oh, I'll come and do it anyway. It's lovely. With the right front man in place, the production team finalised the essential elements of the show. So we have Noel Edmonds, telephones, pop videos, cartoons, uh, over to Rosemary Gill to make a programme out of it, really. Now, that's really how it started. <laughs> Former Blue Peter producer Rosemary Gill decided to put collecting and swapping at the heart of the show. To host the outside broadcasts, she recruited Keith Chegwin, who had become one of the icons of 70s children's TV. Who are you? He was so cheerful and so enthusiastic. And he said, what do you want me to do? And I said, well, I don't know. I haven't thought yet. <laughs> but I'll let, if you'd like to have a go at whatever it is we think of. Yes, he said. I thought it was terribly brave. Here we go. Oh, it's a bit of a stretch this morning. There you go, sir. Well done. What's that you've got there? There was no script for this at all. There was, a, there was a, a, a series of headlines. And Noel was, of course, being a disc jockey, was able to do this. The freewheeling, unscripted approach to the show enabled Noel Edmonds to make spontaneous visits to other parts of Television Centre. Morning. morning. Yes, Noel Edmonds. I've, uh, I've just taken a break from next door. Good morning, chap. Hello, Hello morning. How are you? Morning. Hello, morning. Are you well? Hello, Don't touch me! <laughs> you can't run three hours of total trivia without people getting bored. So John used to come and put the sensible bit in. Right, because we've had, again, hundreds and hundreds of letters from people all over the country who uh, want to uh, tell us their stories. And, uh, what I didn't want didn't was to appear to be, you know, the boring newsman, you know, because then they wouldn't watch when I was on. So it was quite good to be, uh, without losing my authority, really, I don't think, uh, to, to join in some of the fun and games. There's no harm, and you don't lose your, uh, your authority, really, by doing a few silly things, I don't think. I'm a suspect. What kept you? What well, seems to be the problem, Captain? Why this display of emotion? The problem is... We are heading out of control towards a previously unknown planet, and unless checked, the total destruction of our team is inevitable, and Grandstand will just have to start earlier. The huge response to the top ten swaps board proved the show was a success, and its phone number became ingrained on the consciousness of a generation. 018118055. I didn't need queuing for that. I knew that. Give us a ring on 018118055. That's our number, of course. And I had it took me about three quarters of an hour of the first programme to work out that's what you do. And after that, um, it, it, it was legion. We had masses, of course. Line four, who's this? Adrian Burholt. Uh, Anthony Baker. Alison Strutt. Hello, Alison. How are you? Right. It's kind of like eBay, almost, in its proto form. I've got a swap to make. <laughs> You've got a swap to make. But every so often, you get some kid who just take the piss a little bit. Hey, I've, uh, yeah, I've, I've got a bag of toffees, like, and I, I want to swap them for a six-foot snooker table. But that's not going to happen. By giving children the chance to phone in and take part, Swap Shop became the first truly interactive TV show for children. We had the, the, the children ringing up, Hello? speaking to their idols on the telephone, uh, which was a huge uh, uh, breakthrough, really, in, in its day. What would you like to do if you weren't a pop singer? Pardon? <laughs> what would you like to do if you weren't a pop singer? Oh, boy, I don't know. I, I never really thought of it. I've been doing this my whole life since I uh, finished school. This fulfilled a need a gap that was there, and it, it took off straight away. We've got, we've got a big figure straight away for the very first round. We trailed it well, man, you, but it, it, they were there waiting for it. You know. But Swap Shop remained vulnerable to the charge that it was safe, middle class, and a bit too well behaved compared to the irreverent and unruly antics on Tiswas. <laughs> oh, 
I'd have to be so dull and po-faced, wouldn't I, to object to Tiz Wars. Um, and, and I can't. I enjoyed it, I loved it, it was, it was very good fun. I sat and watched it with my kids and uh, it was often very, very funny. It had such an energy and such a lunacy and it was clear, just as an adult, that they weren't fully in control either. So much of Tisbos was also so kind of adult, and all it, it, it is plain because they were just doing it for fun. No particular remit to educate kids. It was basically an ATV continuity slot which just grew and grew and got out of control and turned into this sort of huge monster. This is the stuff they want. No wonder Noel Edwards is out of work. This is incredible. The swap shop was mods, and everyone's sort of all dressed up nicely. Yeah, yeah. And we were the rockers, you know. Concerned parents. Um, force their children to watch Swap Shop yes. um, instead of this anarchic, uh, <laughs> nihilistic <laughs> programme called Tiswas. They didn't want the, the children to see people phantom flam flinging and throwing buckets of water on each other in cages. It was all quite unseemly, wasn't it?